Just like what the keep it close. Man, just like what the brother Batty said, uh, I think this is an important reminder for us to be grateful for what we have. And I know for some of you guys, that was your first time seeing someone standing up to interpret. What if I were to tell you, for those people that sat here that Friday, that was their first time seeing something like that too. And for you, you probably think that, man, that's, that's, that's strange. But that, that tells you, as a community, what we're lacking in. And that's something to add on to the list that we're lacking in. Well, I want to thank Brother Bay and MCC for hosting something like that. Because there's been times where I went, I went to massages and I asked them, hey, you know, there's a brother who's here. When he's an interpreter, you know, would you? You know, something you have to ask permission because, you know, some people might feel some type of way. And I'll get, you know what, maybe it's best for you to go in the back to sign. Or, no, you might get a distraction for some of the other people. So wait till after the hook. Wait till after the salah. Wait till. So now you're telling this person who is deaf who wants to come to the masjid to have that connection with their with their Lord. To now you're pushing it away. So what ends up happening? And this is a sad truth amongst the deaf Muslim community. A lot of them leave this now because they go and meet other deaf uh, people in their community who are Christian and Jewish, and they go and see that in their churches and synagogues that they have interpreters. And they see them having that confidence and that, that faith that they have in their religion and they see that they lack in that and they say, well, I want that. So they go and they leave us now. So that's something that we're going to be held accountable for as a community, right? As, as much as we want to connect with our Lord, we want the same for them. Just like the Hadith says, right? And then, Wallahi, and it's for me as a reminder because I'm a product of both parents who are deaf, alhamdulillah. Those brothers that come in, also the sisters that came in, they're our teachers. Just like Brother Bahi just said, they come here, they don't hear the adhan. We always talk about, man, mashallah, the brother has a beautiful voice for the adhan. They can't hear that. They stand in the first row, and they can't listen to the imam who's reciting the Quran. Or, and the list goes on, but yet they come because they know it's bigger than their hearing disability. Because they know it's, the most important thing is to connect with their Lord. And that's all they want, they're just hungry to come. So once again, I want to thank Brother Bahi for that. And just like you said, to be careful for something for people who have less than you, don't think they're not in the same situation as you. One of the brothers that came uh, there, he was deaf and also had low vision. He couldn't even see. Don't think that those other brothers are saying, Alhamdulillah, what, what I have is, I can't hear. It's the same situation. And don't even, when they, and also when you think less, don't think less of their capability. Because at the end of the day, a deaf person, can have can do anything that we can do. The only thing they can't do is here. Alhamdulillah, my father, immigrant, just like most of most of everyone here, because I'm 29, a lot of you guys are young. Parents came here, first immigrant parents. My father came in from Egypt, worked his butt, had to learn two languages. Why? Because he had to learn English and he had to learn American sign language. The sign language difference, difference in every language in every country. And just for me being up here to talk about this, it just shows you my upbringing for my parents. And my father is my biggest role model. Alhamdulillah. So don't ever think that people who have special needs, whether it be autism, Down syndrome, or any of these things, that they're less than you, or there's some type of imperfection. No, because Allah, when He creates His creation, they're always going to be perfect. It's just that we have an imperfection in understanding them. And that we have to try our best to understand them. And alhamdulillah, I'm glad even earlier today some of the people came up to me and asked me, hey, how do you learn sign language? Obviously, it's my first language. But they asked me, how do you sign? Because eventually, inshallah, that's not going to be the last time that we're going to have people or deaf or any other people with special needs to come to the message. So as us, as a community, we want to allow them to be welcome, to feel welcome. Because the moment, and just like anybody, if they feel like they're not welcome to the message, what's going to end up happening? They're going to abandon the message. They're going to feel like, okay, well, I'm not welcome here, and this, you know, it's going to make me further away from my deen. So, some of the brothers came up to me and asked me how to do signs, and, then, and that's very, and that's great. And one thing that, and I want to end it, whenever we see someone who has special needs, or who is deaf, specifically, because I can speak on the deaf experience, try your best to make an effort. When they see you make an effort, that's, good, that's just like an anything. Whenever a person who speaks a different language, well, you're going to make an effort to speak to them. And you'd be surprised. Most of us are here from out of country. We don't realize that a lot of the signs that we, a lot of the hand was going to talk with our hands. That they're signs. You don't even think about it, right? Like for example, my father's from Egypt. A lot of us we see it when someone said Alhamdulillah, when it, right? Alhamdulillah, right? People don't realize that that's the actual sign. Alhamdulillah. For the Yemenis, if something, if something tastes good, what do y'all do? Right there, right? If someone is, 
in Egypt, if someone is hold tight with their money, what do they do? Bechir, huh? Right? So don't be Bechir when you guys give your donations today at MCC. <laughs> so, inshallah, I just want to end on this. Jazakallah khair. Once again, thank you, Brother Bahi, for allowing this and allowing MCC, you. not me. Uh, MCC, sorry. I'm sorry. But the only reason why I say Brother Bahi is because he was able to understand and accept. Because, yeah, there are they're, they're massages, but it's always the individual that can make it happen. Right? So, once again, just like, okay, and don't feel free to approach me if you have any questions or anything. Like I said, Moxton, I volunteered with Moxton multiple times. So I was their interpreter for their Omra trips, and I was their designated interpreter for the deaf brothers and sisters that attended their trips and how that. So feel free to approach me if you have any questions or anything, because like I said, inshallah, MCC is expanding. We want MCC to be that message, to be different from all the other messages that's going to end up welcoming people with special needs, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.